in 1992, the world teetered on the cusp of a new era. As the world thawed, the global stage was set for a seismic shift in politics, culture, and of course, cinema. The air buzzed with the anticipation of change, a palpable energy that resonated in the bustling streets and the neon-lit cinemas. It was a time when technology, music, and fashion were boldly stepping into the future. With grunge music echoing in the alleys, the internet promising a digital frontier, and movies exploring complex narratives with even more vigor and depth than ever before. Amidst this backdrop of transformation, Lethal Weapon 3 burst onto the silver screen. This is Easy Review's Lethal Weapon, a franchise retrospective. As the familiar chords of the 90s action flick set the tone, audiences were transported back to the chaotic yet charismatic world of Riggs and Murtaugh. The film opens with a literal bang, as Riggs and Murtaugh inadvertently set off a bomb during a botched bomb disposal attempt, setting the tone for the film's blend of high-octane action and comedy. Just provides a comic relief and a sense of continuity within the series. Hey, remember the bomb under your toilet? Oh shit, how can I forget? Red wire, blue wire, same thing. This is more simplified though. A bit more powerful, but more simplified. I really, from where I was sitting, I couldn't see him. <laughs> see? All done. Raj. Yeah. Grab the cat. Ah! The incident leads to the duo being demoted to patrolmen, a temporary setback in their law enforcement careers. You're not helping. Can we speed this up, please? You may have nothing to do. I have things to do today, okay? No, we can't. So will you shut up? Jaywalking. Yeah, license. Yeah? License? Yeah, jaywalking? Yeah, jaywalking. I wasn't driving, okay? I was walking. What do I need a walking license oh, now? God. Let's just shoot oh, him. Oh, oh, crazy? Oh, oh, Get out of the way, Roger. I'm going to drill him. Would you make it look like suicide? Get out of the way. Would you make it look like suicide? Video camera. Video camera. Get out of here before my brother kills you. No, that way. Not that way. This way. This way. Over there. Go round. Round. Run. Run. Red dead. Yeah. As the story unfolds, Riggs and Murtaugh finds themselves embroiled in a complex web of illegal arms dealing. The trail leads them to Jack Travis, played by Stuart Wilson, a former LAPD lieutenant turned nefarious arms dealer. Travis is not only supplying gangs with weapons, but is also involved in the theft and distribution of armor-piercing bullets, known as cop killers. 
the stakes are personal and high, with the entire city, especially its police force, at risk from these lethal weapons. Complicating matters is the arrival of Lorna Cole, Rene Russo, an internal affairs officer with a tough-as-nails demeanor and a sharp wit to match. Cole becomes entangled in Riggs and Murtaugh's investigation, and her relationship with Riggs evolves from adversarial to romantic, adding a new dimension to the film's dynamic. You got a warrant? No, I don't have a warrant, but I can get one. Well, until you do, fuck off. Now that's not a nice thing to say to a lady. Fuck you. I don't think so. <laughs> Thanks, Binky. Adding even more to the mix is the return of Leo Getz, Joe Pesci. You don't recognize my face? No, sir. Watch. The chatterbox informant whose knack for finding trouble is only matched by his loyalty to Riggs and Murtaugh. Oh, yeah. Ouch! How do you spell proctological? Recto exam. Oh, you can't do that to Leo. Sure we can. Getz's return provides a comic relief and a sense of continuity within the series. Oh, that's great, thank you. Well, you know what I say? What? They fuck you in the hospital. First they drug you, then they fuck you. And when they're done fucking you, along comes the insurance Leo, company Leo. and fucks you some more. $10 for a fucking ass Leo. Leo. It's not even okay, Leo. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, what's new on our case? Anything new? You got Travis yet? What did you guys do? Take an ad on the paper? Uh, he's family. The film delves deeper still in the themes of loyalty, corruption, and the personal cost of violence. Murtaugh grapples with the emotional weight of his impending retirement and the impact of violence on his family and community, particularly after a close friend of his son is killed by Murtaugh himself in gang-related activities involving Travis's weapons. It's okay, it was a clean shoot. He's gonna do you, he's gonna do me. It's okay. You okay? It's not okay. What? I know that kid. I know that kid. He's Nick's friend. Lethal Weapon 3 garnered a mixed reception from critics upon its release. While the film was praised for maintaining the electric chemistry between Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, and for its impressive action sequences, it faced criticism for what some perceived as a formulaic plot and excessive reliance on action over character development. Roger Ebert, the famous critic, noted that while the film demonstrated the craftsmanship of its creators, it seemed to lack the fresh sense of invention that brightened the earlier movies in the series. Ebert pointed out that Lethal Weapon 3 depended more on chases, explosions, and set pieces rather than character development. A shift from the previous installments that offered more human elements and set pieces, much like the dinner at Murtaugh's house or the scene set in Riggs' trailer. He did, however, acknowledge that the film had merits and that included Rene Russo as Lorna Cole, whose toughness and chemistry with Riggs added a new layer to the narrative. Other reviews at the time echoed the sentiment, criticizing the film's plot as flimsy, and more of an excuse to string together action and comedy sequences. The film's attempt to tackle various subplots, such as Murtaugh's retirement, 
and the increase in gang violence in Los Angeles, and the hinted at theme of corruption, was seen as not fully integrated into the main narrative. Many also highlighted the fact that Jack Travis simply was not a strong villain, pointing out that while Stuart Wilson's portrayal of the character had moments of effectiveness, it generally lacked the presence and impact of the antagonists from previous films. Despite these criticisms, the film's financial success and its ability to captivate the audience with thrilling action and beloved characters solidified it in its place in the Lethal Weapon franchise. The soundtrack, noted for being as integral as the script itself, contributed significantly to the film's atmosphere, enriching every scene with a heightened sense of suspense and emotion. The film did receive remarkable financial success upon its release, despite the mixed reviews. With a production budget of $35 million, the film bolstered an impressive opening weekend, grossing $33 million and some change. It further solidified its success domestically with a total of $144 million and a substantial worldwide box office haul of $319 million. Compared to its predecessors, Lethal Weapon 3 marked a significant financial leap. Although it did not surpass Lethal Weapon 2, which grossed $227 million on a smaller budget, it outperformed the original Lethal Weapon, which earned $120 million worldwide. This places Lethal Weapon 3 as a notable success in the franchise, but not the most successful in the series. Now, while I resonate with the sentiment that Lethal Weapon 3 may not reach the towering heights of its predecessors, my affinity for the film complicates the viewpoint. The film arrived as a reflection of its time. A blend of relentless action, evolving storytelling, and characters that have become cultural icons. The streets of Los Angeles became a battleground for not just high-octane chases and showdowns, but for a narrative that sought to delve deeper into societal issues, albeit with a trademark humor and camaraderie that the franchise was always revered for. The climax of the film is a gripping showdown between Riggs, Murtaugh, Cole, and Travis. It's not just a physical confrontation, but a fight for justice and a stand against the corruption and the violence that Travis represents. The only problem is, it falls a little flat. Now sure, certainly, in the true classic Lethal Weapon style, the final confrontation is kind of intense, it is personal, and it's laced with both action and emotional resonance, but it feels just muted and lazy, with odd choices and strange pacing. Still, Lethal Weapon 3 weaves together the series' signature elements, unyielding action, sharp humor, and the undeniable chemistry between Riggs and Murtaugh. It's a roller coaster ride through the streets of Los Angeles, where the line between right and wrong is blurred, but the bond between two cops remains unbreakable. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. no, 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 I'm sorry. I, 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 no, no, I, I didn't realize that my retirement's gonna screw you. Forget it, man. I haven't got any problems. I was out of line saying that shit. Oh, Look, man. Well, um, Frank, look, you know, hey, you, you know I love you. You know I love you, Rick. And, and, and your problems are my problem. Huh? I mean, like, like you said, what happens to you happens to me. So. And honestly, if I may say so, Ebert was wrong. We've got this film all wrong. Lethal Weapon 3 is good. It's a strong film. It's a great sequel, even. Or a threequel, if you will. Okay, okay. So, uh, we saw enough of the kitchen. Hey, let me show you upstairs. What do you see this? Uh, it's beautiful upstairs. You're really gonna love this. I'll concede that it has a weak villain overall, especially compared to those that came prior. But you still have a great villainous moment mixed in here and there between all the running away. Get 
It still manages to push the franchise into new directions and depths. It has character development, not just with Riggs, but in Murtaugh's difficulty coping with the killing of Daryl, and the rift that that causes within himself and his community. You even get more depth within the Murtaugh family itself, with Rianne's burgeoning career in acting. And of course, Riggs' fear of losing his new surrogate family when Murtaugh retires. All this is carried with the continued over-the-top excess of 1980s action spectacle, blended with that of 1990s culture. Throw a big budget at it and you get Lethal Weapon 3. While it's certainly evident in the explosions and set pieces, we shouldn't sleep on this film merely for the fact that it's spectacle. The depth in the character development within shows a new period in the lives of its central characters. The explosions in the comedy do still give way to depth in character development, and that's why people shouldn't sleep on this period in the characters' lives. Nor should we sleep on the next installment. Join us next time for our review of Lethal Weapon 4. Until then, I'm Zach Kniep with Easy Reviews. <laughs> this is one of the most painful experiences in my life. They're promoting you. Captain Riggs. Captain Murtaugh. <laughs> Better reload. Think you can stay off the streets and out of trouble? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And take aim. Because your number is up. <laughs> what happened? That's some bad Chinese. <laughs> we never talk about marriage. You want to get married? sort of thing. Guy sort of thing. Are you all alone in here? Uh, 